Okay, so that is the basics of visibility graphics. Um, everything inside a view is specific only to that view. So if you visibly, visibly override floors in level 3 floor, for example, it's not going to do the same on all, any of, uh, of your other levels. 3D views, elevations included. Okay. Um, but there is one thing I want to shift over to you guys, and that is... Um, the ability to change data levels inside Revit. So everything inside Revit is filtered under coarse, medium or fine detail. Now if a view is under fine it means it will show all of the cut patterns that's usually associated with the material that that thing is made out of. So if it is if we didn't overwrite this and that was a brick wall to we, we overwrote this to red but if that was a brick wall at fine detail level that will show as a brick wall it will have a brick hatch right but you could essentially very easily create um by under going under course you can change how things show us under the chorus level by but don't worry about doing that i want you guys to first focus on um controlling how your views look with the visibility graphics this is where you show and hide things as categories and then how you do it, um, how you can also change how things look. So I'm going to change this to a deep grey. Just to look a little bit more professional. Okay. And I'm actually going to... Oh, I didn't show you guys half turn. So half turn turns everything to grey. So if, for example, you guys can see like that the doors and the floor finish in this are... It's, it's light little sand lines, but they're black. You can change that to grey and anything else you can turn to grey like furniture for example by turning on the half tone settings so under furniture i'm going to click on half tone and i want to show, have my floors as well show as half turn you guys see now the floors lines are grey all of the projection lines will now be grey can you guys see so that's a really n nice and neat way, like for example stairs, in this view I also want to show as grey half turn, to start showing depth in your drawings. Okay, and again, like with your 3D views, every view, plan, sections and elevations can have shadows applied to them. Again, be very careful about this, it's not always great to have shadows shown, especially in plans. Because they might confuse the viewer and Revit is casting the shadow a long way around so it, it's, it's creating a, a really weird little visual thing here. I kind of tend to not want to show uh, shadows in plan unless you know what you're doing with your sun settings but we're not going to focus on that today. Okay. <coughs> now um, so we've, we can, we've changed that now in um, our uh, plan again you can do the same thing under ceiling plans okay we don't have any ceilings in these buildings but here they are and you can change how ceilings are shown by clicking on the projection pattern going to let's make it a timber weird timber pattern apply and now all ceilings look like that so that is the basics of visibility graphics. Very important that you know that it is specific to only the view. Okay. So under every view, you can show and hide things on mass as a third category um, through using a visibility graphics. You can also do the same thing for each individual element, which I don't like doing because now you are creating a lot of work for yourself if you ever want to change it. But if, for example, for some reason I wanted these two walls to look different than the rest then you will use element specific visibility overrides and where you find those is just by clicking on those elements in that specific view right click and say override graphics in view by element the category is the visibility graphics the element means only for these two things that I've clicked on and here you get the same settings again Okay. You have your projection lines, projection or surface patterns, the transparency setting, 
and then the two cut lines and cut patterns. Now I know we are cutting through that wall, so I'm going to change the cut pattern to be a solid green, just to illustrate what this does. And now those two walls have a element specific graphic override on them. Now the hierarchy is such that element specific overrides are over and above graphic category graphic overrides. So even though the walls are all supposed to be a, a, a solid gray cut, the elements are um, going to show always. One thing I want you guys to always look at, you see when we go to a site plan, for if ever you guys are working with topography and you have something like contours, I always want to see contours as a light dashed line trees for example and let me show you how to make things into a light dash so if I go to my VV of my site plan visibility graphics and I go down to topography okay and I go open that little drop down menu there's my contours primary contours and secondary contours I can change how those lines look in, in my plan okay so primary contours for example I can override and I'm, I'm going to override them to have a dashed dash dot and to be semi gray. And my secondary contours, those are the ones in between the big contours. I'm going to change to a dash and a very light gray. I want you guys to always do that with contours because they generally tend to override and be super powerful in your plans and site plans. And that's not the great way of doing it because it confuses the, the eye and that's the way Revit has been drawing these things all the time. You can see how much better it looks when you show contours as a dashed line. For example, if I wanted to show these trees as a dashed line, I'm just going to VV uh, planting, <coughs> I believe, and my projection lines, we're not cutting through those trees in site plan, I'm just going to change to, let's, whatever, like one millimeter dots and a light gray. There we go. Now the trees are showing very lightly, unobtrusively. The reason why I do this is because you see these rabbit trees, guys. They always look weird and blocky and bulky, especially once you turn on shadows. They create like these weird artifacts inside your rabbit models. They, they don't look great. And so what I always tend to do is I tend to override all of the planting to be slightly gray and slightly transparent. I don't like seeing shadows from trees in drawings because in river drawings because they have these ugly river trees. If you guys can somehow find very beautiful libraries for trees for use in Revit, which are really light architectural lines, I would be open to accepting that. But for now, we have to overwrite these ones. So in my 3D views, what I usually do, and I suggest you guys do it, is go to your visibility graphics, go down to planting, change the transparency of all of your trees to be slightly less anything more than 10 percent is transparent and uh, we can half turn them okay you don't have to make them dashed lines in 3d that's all i do and look how much look how much more natural the trees are looking i mean you're still aware of them they are there visually but they aren't overriding the visuals of the of the model can you guys also see in 3D how ugly these contour lines are, how thick they are? It's completely unnecessary. I don't ever want to see a 3D view with thick contour lines which are running up that totally overwrite your view. So I'm also going to go down to my topography, change the primary and secondary contour lines to have a, like a line weight of fucking one and to be a, have a slightly gray dashed line. Uh, doesn't seem to be doing a dash line, but it did go lighter and gray, so I'm happy with that. Nothing further to do there. So this is how we can start affecting our categories inside Rivet. We're using our visibility graphics, and we are essentially just playing around with things. Now again, like you can start to use it to highlight certain elements. So in a 3D view, for example. I can go to my visibility graphics and let's say all of my mullions need to be have a projection pattern of a solid blue and all of my 
structural beams. I'm going to go down to structural framing. I want to have a projection pattern of solid dark blue or dark purple. Okay. Overwrite. And can you guys see those? That's how I, I would do the same with columns as well. So structural framing. I'd copy over to structural columns to have a solid. I just want to copy that color. So you can add it to your custom colors to my surface pattern of my structural columns as well. And there we go. So now we can start illustrating how things look in 3D. Um, I'm going to override my walls, all of my walls, to have a background pattern of like a really subtle beige, very, very subtle background. And foreground, we can, I mean, I can change it to anything, but specifically, let's just use vertical lines, doesn't matter, slightly gray, let's see how it looks. And now all of my walls are looking like that. It's not great to maybe do this for walls, as you guys can see. But it's a cool way of illustrating material use. For example, what if this wall we wanted to show as a brick wall? Um, so the visibility graphics for the category is now that, but let's change this to like an orange brick wall. So I'm going to just right click on that one wall, overwrite my graphic for that element, <coughs> and change the background to be a solid, almost orangey. Orangey hue, like that, and change the foreground pattern to be a brick. Okay, it does, they don't have brickwork in this one. I don't know why. Oh, that's usually under model patterns, which you can only apply to the material itself. So you will only have drafting patterns when you do this. But uh, let's just do blocks, little blocks, doesn't matter. Okay. One day I'll teach you guys how to make your own hatch patterns outside of Revit's default standard. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's the, this is important to note. It's just patterning we're using. That doesn't exist as geometry now. That's a solid wall inside Revit, right? So we are just applying patterns specifically to this. This is all a little bit extreme, as you guys can obviously see. But I just wanted to illustrate to you how to apply visibility graphics to specific things. Right, I think that is actually it. I'm just going to overwrite floors to have a slightly solid green. Okay, I know it's weird, but it's just... Okay, now I'll, let's get to the graphic displays. And this is super important with respect to shadows. Okay. Now, with every view, we have visibility graphics, okay? We also have something called the graphics display. That's usually here at the bottom, under the visual styles. So, you guys know there's the wireframe option for each, for each view, hidden line, which is the one I like best, because it communicates architectural intent cleanly without too much information. Then there is <coughs> the shaded view, which I just use for modeling. I don't expect you guys to ever give me shaded views as final prints or exports. Okay, it's very important that you don't do that. This that is only because this is most of the time the shading shaded elements in these views look terrible. Okay, so don't give me that. Consistent colors, which just that's what it is, and then the two realistic. Um, ways of doing it and I don't ever want to see that. Not the semester. Okay. So but you'll see an additional setting here which is called our graphic display option. This is where you control your shadows, your lighting, your lines, or general your lines, how they look, and your uh, yeah I did say shadows. So the shortcut for that is G D or you can just click here down at the bottom 
under your little view cube for the model display settings and say graphic display options. This is very important. It's also specific to the view at which you are looking at. Okay, so this setting I'm only changing for this camera view in which I am now. And you can do the following. Now, you guys saw how I changed the transparency of all of my elements inside the visibility graphics. You can also do it here with the graphic display option as a transparency override, which is, might be a little bit neater and cleaner than doing it in your visibility graphics. I like playing with this one. Another setting you have here at the top for your lines is your model display lines. Okay. And if you smooth them, look at how much better the black lines will be. Okay, I generally turn that on. If you've got a good computer, you can turn that on. Otherwise, if you're having performance issues, turn it off. Okay, for now, I'm going to turn it back off. Silhouettes are the lines uh, behind things, I think. Uh, if we turn it into medium lines, let's see what happens. Oh, okay. So that's the edge lines, that's the silhouettes. And if you find a very wide line, I see what it's doing, but it's doing that, drawing that over all of the elements. So I'm not entirely convinced by that as a graphic display. It does look a little bit more cartoony, which is good, but I'm not too happy with that. So I'm going to turn my um, sorry, graphic display silhouettes off. Okay, we don't want to see that now. Sometimes you want to have little dashed lines. I guess that's what it does. Okay, off. Then, um, obviously, and those are specific to the specific styles that you are using. I'm going to keep playing with hidden lines for now. Now, next we have shadows. And to many of you guys, I've taught you the basic principles of this in the beginning of the year. Uh, we have cast shadows, which is what, or direct shadows, which is what we're seeing here. And you have ambient shadows. So ambient shadows is almost like ambient occlusion. It's just the soft shadows in where surfaces meet. So it's sort of like corner shadows. Okay, it doesn't have direct shadows from the sun. That's caused being caused from an object hitting the sun and then casting a shadow. Ambient shadow is more has to do with depth and atmosphere. Direct shadows more has to do with tectonics. Okay. Um, and you can combine them in various ways. So you can turn them both on. Now I have cast shadows and ambient shadows. You can see it's getting quite dark, right? So what I tend to do if I'm showing both types of shadows, I, I will try and lighten the scene. So where you do that is under lighting. Okay, I'll get to sketchy lines now, but they're quite self-explanatory. And under lighting, I will change my ambient light be quite light and my shadows to be quite subtle. Can you guys see we still have our cast shadows and our ambient shadows but it's not really doing um, it's not really that oppressive anymore. Uh, you can increase your sun maybe. Oh, sorry decrease the sun. Nope. Okay. I thought that might make it lighter. Okay, that's not doing much. And we'll talk about background in a little bit. So that's how you play with the shadows. Now, in addition to that, obviously, you can <coughs> have sketchy lines. Be very careful about this, guys. I do not want to see you using this as a gimmick, which a lot of people do, is they just turn on sketchy lines with like a jitter and an extension and think it's looking like an architectural sketch. I don't want to see you doing this, actually. Uh, if you really feel like this is going to do the job for you, I'd rather have you just export a normal Revit view without colors and sketch over it yourself. Having the computer do your job for you, for you is not going to convince me that you're using the software to to an, uh, uh, to an advantage. Okay, so you can use this as a basis to start off your own sketches from if you want to, but I don't want to see you just pressing export but, um, and with your sketchy lines on. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to disable it for now. Right. Depth queuing. Actually, this is for elevations. Um, you won't be able to turn it on and out. Go to uh, one of the elevations. 
yeah, we have an elevation, okay. And depth queuing essentially st simulates depth by putting things which are further away from the camera as grey and closer to the camera or the elevation camera as um, as black. So you'll go to your graphic display options and under depth queuing, say show depth, and there you guys can see. And you can play with how it displays. So if you kind of squish it, it's not going to be that. Oh, it's, it's even stronger. Okay. And the fade limit, is you're going to tell Revit how much to limit it, to limit the grayness. So if your fade limit is at zero, it will grade down to zero. If your limit is 86, it won't grade down that much for the things which are further away from the camera. This is a really great way of making your elevations look with, like it's got depth in it. Okay, here it's not doing much because we're kind of cutting through this and this is all close to us. If we move it, yeah, if we move the depth range closer to to us now it's starting to make things um, in inside this building already have depth okay so please remember for depth queuing in your elevations I don't believe you can use that under um, plans um, and then um, don't worry about photographic exposure because you're not going to be doing renders from inside Revit this semester. You will not do that. In fact, if you try and do that for the semester exams, my external will most likely fail you. Um, sorry about that. Um, and then obviously you have the background settings. Now, sometimes students want to change how the background looks. Um, you can do that by changing it to a gradient. And then playing with the sky horizon and ground color. So if we wanted to make it like quite acid trippy, we can change it to like an orange sky, orange and red sky with like a 80s, like eight, six, 18 bit ocean running in the background. Okay, this is quite kitsch, but obviously you guys can see what I am trying to do. If you wanted everything to be quite minimal and look the same, sorry. You can just under your background change all of your colors to the same color. So a gray and gray as well. Okay, so that's a lot more muted, obviously, but it still communicates the horizon and everything to us. Now, guys, I want to be very clear. You can actually change how things look without any um, with the shadows and with um, light it can quite can get quite um, expressive. There is a website, um, the one which I've um, explained to many of you guys so far, which is this guy's website. And there's a there's a tutorial where he actually goes and does a, um, a very these these are quite realistic, but there are some one um, architectural illustrations which he's done, which is quite abstract and sketchy like that. It's also done that one in like a very illustrative um, strong shadow way which I'm going to show you now just can't find it we'll get through our Photoshop tutorials which is basically what this guy is a master at but it was this um, where he just uses sharp shadows to highlight um, the lighting for a specific building I generally tend to do it like this as well that's a little lot more sketchy but let's say for example um, we wanted to change the shadows okay i'm not going to show ambient shadows just yet to be super dark black essentially okay now shadows are black but look how cool that actually looks when you are if you are trying to illustrate depth okay and like i would then change all of my floors to have like a really strong U, like a warm U. And again, now we can play <coughs> with our shadows. So I can go to my sun settings and change. How, I don't care actually today, like what's happening with it, but let's play around with it. So let's say a single day time simulation, sunrise to sunset, 30 minute intervals. Okay. And I'm going to preview my seller study and just pan through it. Oops. Okay, there we go. Okay. 
Okay, so you guys can see I'm starting to create like illustrations now from my model rather than actual architecture. Now, it's important to understand that you can do something like this, quite muted and gray and architectural and sketchy. Once we get to Photoshop, we'll get there. You could also um, do expressive illustrations like this where you can overwrite the graphics you know, uh, of things specifically like that. Um, just zoom in and get to like a better vantage point. So can you guys see like how much I want to change the curtain walls? That's a really stupid color. I want to choose something that sort of speaks to the, the floors. Okay. Maybe it's just a weird hour. So maybe. You guys get the gist of it. Okay, you can create really beautiful illustrations from your models. It doesn't need to be realistic. I don't need to see hyper shaded realistic views. I can craft how things look inside Revit now with this, just by zooming in and out and creating graphics from this. Okay, um, I just, I'm just looking for that tutorial which he did specifically for this project, like that. Can you guys see? is just a strong shadow with some color overlay over it and it creates a really beautiful atmospheric images this is a little, look, a little bit more subtle that's very realistically done in photoshop and once we get to photoshop we can really experiment um, with how we combine our rivet views into a little lot more textured presentations okay um, and again, what I would do with this one is like, because it's like almost like a, a cyber punky feel I'm going for this, almost like a comic strip uh, vibe. I would like, it, you, you'd keep the sky gray for like a Sin City vibe, but you could essentially change the, the, the sky to talk to the colors that I'm trying to highlight for my floor slabs here. So I would go to my background and change the sky to a, maybe like a muted, to like a strong drab pastel okay so now we're talking about like a late afternoon exploration and I'll like like just insinuate that this parts of the Sun is catching our building you guys can see that I mean this is starting to talk towards an architectural presentation Sometimes what I do is I go to and understand that we've done I've done entourage with most of you guys, so I'm just going to load some people um, and under entourage I'll find them male and female. Oh, they're already loaded. <coughs> Sorry, so I'm just going to place like a person. Let's place Cindy. Yeah, where are they? <coughs> Place Twain here, there. Okay, I'm just gonna copy a couple of them over. Maybe someone standing here in the sh uh, shade. And what I'm gonna do, all of the entourage figures, they're kind of looking the same, so I want to change them to different people. Okay, and what I'm gonna do, let's put a, another person inside the building somewhere. Come on, stay. Okay. Okay, that one jumped up into the. It's not looking right. Okay. Also, how you place entourage figures in your uh, views very important. I'm just randomly placing them here. There's a whole study under Alex Ogre for how do you place entourage figures inside your um, inside your scene. Okay. Um, and again, look, this is just a standard rivet view with some basic photoshopped or over sketched materials. This is more or less where I want you guys to get. So what I now again looking at the color and the transparency and the harshness, maybe the people should either be super harsh or transparent. So I can experiment with both. So let's try that. So I'm going to go to Entourage. Um, I'm going to give them all 
like a slight transparency and my projection patterns it's going to be like a solid fill of like maybe harsh magenta let's see how this looks i'm going to make it slight transparency let's see how that looks okay that's not doing much Try to give them a color. Let's see what happens if we don't add any. Like, oh, entourage, am I freaking? That's weird. Hmm. Interesting. change the lines of them but I can't change their surface pattern for some reason maybe it is oh. so that's that one's not working well because you kind of need to have a silhouette he's standing in the shade solid full visible I'm unsure why this is not working. This is probably something to do with uh, the family for those people. Not to worry though, we'll get to photoshopping our own people and I just wanted to kind of create like a, a really nice gradient for these people. Maybe if I select one of them and override their surface pattern. Yeah, it's not really doing anything as you guys can see. The off turn is working. But not the actual solid color for that person strange it must be a family thing but you, at the very least you guys know with these default entourage families you can change the line weights and the line types okay so you guys can see now this is one way of doing things another way of doing things would be to do something very muted okay um and then there are all of the iterations and styles in between I don't want to see you just copying me. I'm just explaining to you how you can work with shadow and light inside Revit. This is a Revit drawing that Alex O'Griff did uh, with some basic photoshopping and some the dodge and burn tool, which I'll teach you guys in one of the next sessions. Uh, that's a super realistic uh, alteration that he's done. And then the illustrate with like strong shadows and strong light and strong colors. Okay. Presentation is now from now on going to start melding into your present uh, into your submissions for CAD. I don't want to see you just accepting what the computer is giving me and producing drawings like this or like this. Okay, I don't want to see shaded views, I want to see hidden line views with you crafting colors and materiality into your own drawings now. Uh, lastly, just to close this down, it's been a long session. In the 3D view, you guys can also see that we started to play with the materials on specific elements. You can apply actual model textures like brickwork on some things um, through using the material and settings. Oh, just another thing, guys. Um, if you're using black lines, it might be a good idea, sorry to, for jumping around, it might be a good idea to change the line weights of some things to white. For example, what about the curtain walls? So now the shadow, that this view is currently in shadow. If, if I go to my visibility graphics and for my millions, I change my line, line styles to be white. Let's just see if that does anything. Yeah, you can kind of see. Uh, those lines are white. You see, so that that also works in, in a way. You guys can see we're getting a lot more definition now on things, which is catching the light. Let's try it with walls. So if I go to walls, change my line weights to be white. Okay, it's not doing that much. You're seeing some sort of grip, uh, sort of white chalk line there. If we change our shadows to not be completely black. So not that. Um just do ninety four percent. Ah that's not really doing much. In fact that's weird. 
Also, guys, just know that <laughs> I've preached so many times to you that you should not give me big black blotches in drawings. Obviously, I'm a little bit better at presentation than the average second or third year student. So I kind of know how to set things up and how to communicate architecturally. So just be very careful about handing me big black blotches of shadows like I've done. You know, Understand what you're trying to communicate, what you're trying to highlight, and what you're trying to illustrate um, softly or harshly. Let's just get back to the materials now. Now, you guys did see that I can't change this <coughs> thing, even if I'm changing its individual properties to have a foreground material. I can't give it a model hatch. And these drafting hatches look really terrible. If I just show you. Okay, you guys see it's looking really terrible. It's not doing its job. Even if I look at this wall, provide a surface pattern and make it white. That's not doing much, okay? If we change the material for the element, you can change the surface patterns even in 3D views. So I click, I'm clicking on this roof, and if I click on edit type, there's my structural settings. From there, I can click on edit, and um, then this is called your mater structural um, material. Uh, excuse me guys, this is your structural material um, setup for this roof. This is a very complex roof, so it's got a lot of materials in it, so that it kind of looks like that when you're cutting through it. It's got the main concrete, it's got the uh, screed, insulation, and final finish or whatever. Okay. Uh, we are only interested in the, the, the top material, which is the one you're looking at in elevation. Like, phew, that's the top material, right? I can change that material's look to have a different model pattern. Okay, now it's, this is obviously not accurate because it should actually um, have different foreground patterns than uh, an asphalt for what I'm going to do now. But I'm going to change it to brickwork. Now, if I click on my foreground pattern for this material, the top one, okay, I can change it to model, and now there should be brickwork. There we go. Now, if I click OK, let's see how it looks. Nothing. <laughs> okay, I change the roofs. Maybe that's the underside. Should be fine. Yeah, that is quite a strange thing. Don't worry about materials thing. Um, I think I might have some uh, graphic card errors currently because I've been having some problems. We'll talk about materials thing um, in the next session. Uh, I just wanted to get to how much you guys can actually customize and change, for example, um, some views inside Rivet itself. For it essentially to become a modeling, uh, a, a visual graphic display presentation board for you. Okay. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Um, we'll move on to uh, some photoshopping and um, some additional um, detailed drawing, conventional um, rivet tutorials in the next session. But for now, I, I'm expecting you guys to understand massing, applying elements to masses, making things look believable, and changing the way that your lines are showing. Changing the thing that you sh the way that your shadows are showing, and changing the way that your surface battle patterns are showing. Nothing should be given to you by the program without you sh affecting how it looks and what it's doing. Oh, there it is. Okay. Anyway, that doesn't matter for now. Thank you, guys. Uh, so that's it for now.